Good afternoon, welcome back. I know I have not been around a while, but I chose not to do so many videos unless I had something new or different or some new product or whatever to share with you. I didn't think it was reasonable to just kind of keep repeating very similar videos. Uh, today, I wanted to share with you some alternative materials, I guess you would say, um, to decorate your books with. Also, uh, some storage structures I think you need to look at. And uh, also share with you my three end bands I learned in a recent online class from Austin Book Art Center. Uh, there was a fourth end band called a uh, Islamic end band. And I just didn't perfect that well enough to really share it with you. So in, the, in, in my in-band journey, there have been um, the primary in-band, which is what I use in my um, vellum bindings. It's structural. You tie down into every signature, and I've, I've shown that before. But these are the three decorative in-bands that we learn. I'm going to try to focus in on that a little bit so you can see. Um, it starts out with where you do a two color in band uh, with a bead on the front and then you graduate into a three color in band and the bead is not quite as beady like, it's more ropey like to me. And then my new favorite is this one which is a three color, two core in band. <clears throat> and because of the way you wrap around the thread core at the lower side of the front, the color goes all the way down to the text block and there's no real bead. And I think it, it just really looks very, very nice and it gives you the opportunity to do a lot of color change uh, and do more patterns uh, with the end band, as you can see here, it's not every other or every third. It's, it's a variation in the colors. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is uh, I met a nice uh, metal artist at a local fair, uh, Dragon Metal Studio in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And she had all of these pieces of jewelry with these images on it, and I asked her to make me some and I uh, told her I wanted to put them on the front of a book. So I went to her studio and she picked out some larger ones than she uses for a lot of her jewelry. And we played around with it and came up with many that you may see in the future. So this is a leather bound book. Um, and I did a second piece of board glued to the, the basic board of the book. and made a little recess to accept this uh, little medallion. And I hope that you can see that there is some blind tooling here and the raised cords and blind tooling on the back. The um, reason that I had her make me some dragon ones was because I had found a new uh, paper uh, digital paper set from Victoria, V-E-C-T-O-R-I-A designs on Etsy that it were fantasy, dragons, um, and I just kind of like the imagery and the colors, so I wanted to use those uh, pages in a book and uh, needed something to decorate the pages. The other thing that I have done, and I've shown you fish leather before, this little magnetic band is just lined fish leather that also has a recess on the back so that it, when the book is laying down and you want to write on it, this is a flat surface. Um, but I also met a lady at the Southern Highland Craft Guild show that does needle felting that she then uh, makes designs on. And so this is very fuzzy and, and nice and I am going on an um, expedition cruise to Alaska in a couple of weeks, so I made something that has a little bit of a nautical theme to it, 
and uh, also has pictures of whales because I hope to see a lot of those when I go to uh, Alaska. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, I have done a lot of limp vellum and here's another limp vellum that's uh, a long stitch through the spine that's then uh, you, you weave across the th threads of the long stitch so that you kind of protect them. But I've also started incorporating on these limp vellum things, not only the leather lacing here, but some embroidery type things there. And this is just a <laughs> cut off chopstick and uh, a little metal piece with an owl to go on top of this. And then the, uh, the book simply, that's the closure, opens like this. Uh, so that closure is, is another interesting thing. And then I think these clamshell boxes, and there's all sorts of YouTubes uh, DAS bookbinding has some, Sage Reynolds has some, Arthur Green, but making a nice clamshell box to store these books in that are a little more delicate or that have things like the metal designs or whatever on front I think is very important and learning to make those was a lot easier than I thought. So I hope some of this inspires you to look at some different things to use in your book binding and um, also something to do to protect your books. Have a great day. See you later.